Welcome to the Sunlight Alliance, home of the One Piece Think Tank, and unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen or at least heard about the One Piece live-action casting announcement. There has been a lot of mixed opinions and speculation making its way throughout the community since the casting choices were released. That's not to say there aren't a lot of people in support of these choices, but there are also a lot of fans on the opposing side. So if you are one of those fans specifically, I would like to encourage you to watch to the end of this video for three reasons. One, to better understand why I believe these actors were the best choices for the respective characters. Two, why I would recommend holding any sort of criticism on the writing or acting until the adaptation is released. And three, why you should have trust in Oda and the team behind this project. Also, I will be revealing something mind-blowing regarding one of the actors, so get ready. Let's start at the beginning. In 2017, Oda first confirmed that alongside Tomorrow Studios, the production for a live-action version of One Piece had begun. The adaptation will be made for fans with the promise of a show that strongly follows the manga source material. Nothing else was said for another two years. And then we got this. I know I announced the production of this back in 2017, but these things take time. Preparations have been slowly progressing behind the scenes, and it seems that I can finally make the big announcement. Netflix, the world's leading streaming entertainment service, will be lending us their tremendous production support. This is so encouraging. How far will the story progress over the 10 episodes of season one? Who will be cast? Please be patient a little longer and stay tuned. It's almost an understatement to say that the reaction to this announcement was, well, not the best, and understandably so. Netflix has one of, if not the worst, reputations when it comes to live-action adaptations of anime. Not to mention, pretty much any westernized adaptation of different anime not pointing any fingers, have never really left a positive imprint on their respective franchises. That's not to say there haven't been decent adaptations, but I think it's a consensus among fans that usually these things don't go well. And a lot of you are probably thinking, that's exactly why we are so skeptical. And as much as I can understand that point of view from a surface level, allow me to present some information that shows why this series will be different from any other live adaptation and why I believe it won't let us down. Not too long after this announcement by Oda, we were blessed with the 8th Reverie on September 20th of 2020. This colossal event hosted by Rogers Base included multiple popular content creators from the community. I was lucky enough to be aware of this gathering at the time, and the reveals we got during it were groundbreaking. When I first heard about the live action adaptation, I was equally skeptical and honestly just uninterested. However, once Matt Owens made his appearance on the Reverie, my opinion completely changed. The very first thing he states when being introduced is how much of a fan he is of the One Piece content creators at the Reverie. And the very first thing you should do after hearing this is leave a like and subscribe for One Piece content like this every week. <laughs> He states he's watched pretty much all of the Grand Line review videos and that he frequently sends videos made by the creators to people working on the series and that One Piece is his favorite story of all time. He is making sure that everyone working on this project is either a fan already or at the very least is informed of all the political, emotional, and communicable nuances of the series. For those who don't know, Matt Owens is the head writer and executive producer of the upcoming One Piece live action. The man bringing us this live action series is not some corporation trying to milk One Piece for what it's worth, but an actual member of the community who wants to help bring this amazing series to life and spread it to a larger audience. Not only that, but this man is working side by side with Oda himself to ensure that the series is true to the manga while perfectly encapsulating Oda's vision for the series. The amount of love Matt has for One Piece should be obvious to anybody who hears him speak, and he clearly has a solid understanding of what One Piece is all about. Just listen to this. I told Oda, you know, one of the great things about One Piece is it's really a story about how everyone has tragedy, pain, sadness in their life, but it's not what defines you. What defines you is how you use that to motivate your future and that no one has to do it alone. No one in this world has to be alone. When you find those people around you who motivate you and lift you up and help you, that's the greatest power in this world. And that is the story that I want to put out into the world. Mm. So I know that One Piece means a lot to you, Oda. It means a lot to me because I honestly believe that One Piece saved my life. 
Wow. Wow. That's that was beautiful. beautiful. That was beautiful. That's very he, he looked at me. He looked me in the eye. Held his hand out across the table and said, I have 100% faith in you now. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. Are you guys picking up what I'm putting down here? This is the man that Oda looked in the eye and said, I have 100% faith in you. His dream to create this show spawned literally from a tragic backstory, just like a character in One Piece would have. Another question that was brought up was, does the live action intend to stay true to the brutality of the manga? To which Matt responds, and I quote, this is a TV 14. This is a world of brutality and violence, as much as it is a show about hope and family. This is not the 4Kids version, I promise, end quote. This statement presents even more of a reason to have faith that they are going to do their ultimate best to properly adapt the story of One Piece. So, story-wise, there is not much reason to be worried. But how will it look? How will they handle Luffy's stretching and all the other weird devil fruit powers like Buggy's Chop Chop Fruit? Or how will fishmen like Arlong look in the final version? This is a valid concern that most friends have. CGI stretching used in films like the early Fantastic Four movies don't get the best reception. This might come as a shock to most people, but get this. The budget for this TV show is 90 to 100 million dollars, or 9 to 10 million dollars per episode. Why is this absolutely insane? These numbers put the live-action One Piece adaptation in the top 10 most expensive TV series to ever be made in the United States, right up there with Game of Thrones and The Mandalorian. With that in mind, it's not a stretch to assume that the visuals for this series, if not absolutely incredible, will be satisfactory at the very least. The visual animators who will be working on the show are still unknown to us, but with the information we have on Matt's process and his dedication to the series, I truly believe that we should have faith in who he chooses to bring these visuals to life. Alright, it's time, let's talk casting. These five actors are the actors that Oda and Matt chose to be our real life Straw Hat Pirates. Here's what Oda said. We've been working with Netflix and Tomorrow Studios on the massive project that is the Hollywood live action series adaptation of One Piece. How many years has it been since it was announced, right? I know, I know, but rest assured, we've been making steady progress all along. It's not easy when you're working with people from different cultures, but it's precisely that process that can yield something special. For now, we're able to announce the main cast. Rather, we need to hurry and announce it or else it'll be leaked, apparently. Hilarious. LOL. Their face, the size of their mouths, and their hands, their aura, the way they carry themselves, their voice, their acting skills, their height, the balance amongst the Straw Hat crew, etc. We decided on this cast after numerous discussions involving people around the world. These are the people who will be our Straw Hat Pirates. It'll take a bit more time to get the show done, but we'll continue to do our best to deliver a show that we're confident will be enjoyed by everyone around the world. Look forward to more updates in the future. Yeah. Yes, I am definitely looking forward to more updates in the future. Also, if you have a second, go ahead and make your way to the comment section, and I'm curious, just let me know your thoughts on the One Piece live action. I'm curious to see how many people watching are looking forward to it, or how many people watching are not looking forward to it. Many of you probably know that in an SBS all the way back in volume 56, a fan asked Oda what nationalities would the Straw Hat Pirates be if they were from our world. Oda stated that Luffy would be Brazilian, Zoro Japanese, Nami Swedish, Usopp African, and Sanji French. This is important as we further analyze these actors to find out why they are a perfect fit for these roles. Hello everyone, my name is Inaki Godoy Caso. Guess what? I'm gonna be playing Luffy. Inaki Godoy is a fairly New Mexican actor, so not Brazilian, but still a clear choice for our future Pirate King, simply based on his presence. His joy, excitement, and smile give off heavy Luffy vibes, which is exactly what we should want from someone playing Luffy. He is already making posts about his time researching and developing developing a love for the series, as well as being photoshopped in classic Luffy attire, which I think looks great. Makenyu, a Japanese actor who is praised in Japan as being one of their most popular rising stars. And if you think this guy won't be able to play Zoro, just watch this video. Yeah. That is our Zoro. Emily Rudd, 
For those of you who don't know who Emily Rudd is, she is most known for her role in the Fear Street trilogy released on Netflix this year, which was actually way better than I expected, so if you had a scary movie night, highly recommend. Before the live action casting announcement, a large majority of the fan base actually was hyping her up. She might be one of the only Straw Hats that doesn't match up to the nationality originally thought of by Oda, but it's clear based on her personality why she was chosen. In addition, it's even more hopeful seeing how much of a weeb she already was before being casted. Jacob Roman Gibson. Now, this one might be my favorite out of the whole selection. The amount of excitement and energy Jacob is putting into the world after this release just makes me laugh and gives me so much hope for his character. Not to mention, this dude looks exactly like Yasop. Like, scarily similar. And like most of the other actors, he also matches up with the nationality Oda intended. Taz Skyler. Now this one got me. When I first saw this picture, I unironically thought this was Eminem. Like I thought it was a meme when I first saw the announcement. My whole brain just like went dark. I know these memes are going to get old really fast, but it's just, it's really funny. Jokes aside, this guy has one of the most credible acting portfolios of the five actors, as well as being a writer, producer, and director. And get this, at the beginning of this video, I told you I had something crazy. Here it is. I was watching Rogers Bay stream when he pointed out this insane detail. If you go on Taz Schuyler's IMBD bio, you will find that he is of British descent, a nationality that usually encompasses the theme of royalty. Oda specifically put in Sanji's nationality to be French in the SBS, which made perfect sense at the time. But what have we learned about Sanji since volume 56 that we did not know then? Sanji is royalty. I don't know about you guys, but this blew my friggin' mind when I heard it. This, along with all of the other things mentioned in the analysis, is why you, yes, you, should have hope for this adaptation. Just like Luffy doesn't judge Rebecca when fighting out why the crowd was booing in Dressrosa, don't judge this adaptation based on other bad adaptations. Be reassured that this series is gonna issue in a new age of piracy that will take the Western world by storm. On another note, if you're interested in what I think Luffy's Gear 5th should be, check out this this video to see my crazy theory. Join the alliance by subscribing or Netflix will recast Sanji to be played by the real Slim Shady. Bye.